Jackie Wheeler. I'd like to welcome you to Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, her home congregation. As we gather together for this funeral service to the glory of God, for the life that he gave to her here, and for the life that she enjoys in heaven with him now, and the life that she will have in the resurrection of the dead. Hopefully you received a bulletin as you came into the sanctuary this morning. And now let us begin with the remembrance of holy baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In holy baptism, Jacqueline Lee Wheeler was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all her sin. St. Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. You may be seated for our entrance hymn this morning, How Great Thou Art, verses 1, 3, and 4. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And no, also with you. Let us pray. God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Jackie and to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading that our brother in Christ Doug chose for this morning is the beloved Psalm 23, written by King David, the shepherd. David writes, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our second reading is from the Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I would invite you to please rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, for a sign that is opposed and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was eighty-four. She did not depart from the temple, 
worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. God has made us his people through baptism into Christ, just as he did Jackie quite a number of years ago, and living together in that same trust and hope that she has, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our sermon hymn this morning, The Lamb.
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, from Good Shepherd, friends, family, and especially you, Douglas, Scott, and Patrick, may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, bastards aren't supposed to do this. <laughs> <laughs> See, sure. Everything gets to me. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Hey, Patrick, I'll take one of those two. <laughs> That's no, I'm serious. <laughs> There was a prophetess by the name of Anna. And I added this into the text for this morning that Doug had originally picked. The game up to the part of what we call the Nunc Dimittis, which we sing at the end of Holy Communion here at Good Shepherd. And I intentionally added in these last few verses of St. Luke's Gospel in chapter 2, which kind of ends the whole Christmas narrative. About Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. One reason I did it was because I think Anna, in a way, is a picture of our dear friend, Jack. In a way, I think Anna is and should be, if I had any say about it, as part of the LWML. I think Anna should be the poster woman for LWML. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping and fasting and praying night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of Him to all who are waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. That's all St. Luke tells us about Anna. Those are the only details we have of her life. She was 84. She was a widow. And she loved Jesus. She loved God. Now I'm sure there is more to Anna than meets the sky. Friends, family, potentially children, though Luke does not tell us of that detail one way or another. He doesn't tell us about Anna's past. He doesn't tell us any of her stories. The adventures and the trips that maybe she had with her husband and with her family. Luke doesn't tell us about the times that she would come up to the temple to worship, to fast, to pray, to bring alms, to look forward to the coming of Jesus what else she did amongst the temple. Before my arrival here at Good Shepherd, I had been told by a number of the ladies that Jackie was the one who made sure for many years that the sanctuary was just right. Teaching the other women of the altar guild and some of the men as well about how all of the appointments should be set, how everything 
needs to be taken care of, folded, and ironed. She would probably not be happy with the way that I ironed the fair linens. <laughs> I never did have a chance to ask her to teach me. There is one thing that is important about Anna. Anna was looking forward to her saving. And she knew he was coming. Anna knew her Savior was coming because Anna knew she needed to be saved. She knew she was a sinner. She knew that there were times when, I'm sure, Anna got into arguments with her husband. Not that Douglas and Jackie would have ever had any arguments at all. <laughs> I'll ask Scott and Patrick later on. <laughs> <coughs> or if Anna had children of herself, if she ever sinned against them. Or if they drove Anna so nuts that they caused her to sin. But she knew this one thing. <coughs> she needed a savior. And she knew that someday he was going to come. You have Jackie's story. You know the details of her life. You've been there. You've been with her through the ups and the downs, through the strokes with the other struggles. You've seen how she carried herself. You saw how she loved just about everyone that she met. And I think the reason that is so true is because she knew that Jesus loved everyone. And that was the most important thing to her. Family was right there underneath that. Making sure that all of you knew that Jesus loved you. Praying for you. Bringing you to church. Most of the time in this very building. Whether it was for Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve services or other services throughout the year, where then Jackie had the opportunity to share that love in Christ with so many others who are gathered here today. She could love them, care for them. But Jackie also knew this one thing as a good LWML member. She knew she was a sinner. She knew that she struggled. In fact, she told me there about as much that one time that I went over to the hospital to visit her. Because she was always concerned about everyone else. She wasn't concerned about herself. She wanted to know that everybody else was being taken care of. She wanted to know how everyone else's health was, how everyone was being taken care of or not being taken care of. In fact, that one day in the hospital when I went to visit her, after about a six minute visit, she looked at me and said, Pastor, you can pray now, and then you have other things to do. And I looked at her, and as nicely as I could say, I said, Jackie, you're the one who needs the ministering to. And so she let me pray for her. 
and she sent me out of the room. <laughs> That again brings us back to who Jackie is, not was, but is. Even in her own time of need, she was more concerned about you. She was more concerned that you knew Jesus, that you were being taken care of. The world goes on outside today. And unfortunately, most of the world didn't have an opportunity to know your wife and your mom and your dear friend. And the world is worse for it. But they didn't have the opportunity to know that. And to know her. And to know her sense of humor. Even if it meant giving Keith and Bernie just a little bit of chuckle that needed them to stop telling their jokes. <coughs> but in all actuality, <clears throat> the thing that was most important, the thing that she was looking forward to the coming of her Savior. Like Anna, she knew that Jesus was coming. And in fact, week after week, year after year, Jackie didn't have to wait. Because she came and knelt at this altar, at these very rails. And in her hands, she took her Savior. The Savior who came into this broken world. The Savior who knew sin, who knew struggle, who knew sickness, who knew broken families, who wept at the death his dear friend Lazarus who knew what it was like to feel like he had been abandoned to want to know what it's like to not have others around to support you and to die on the cross for your sins for Jackie's sins <laughs> for the world's sins. But she knew the other part of the story. She knew that her Savior three days later rose from the grave. She knew that her Savior who had died on the cross had showed himself to the disciples who showed his hands and his feet and his side and the holes on his head from that crown of thorns, who ate fish with them, who spent time with them for 40 days, showed himself alive, and who promised to come to us in his gifts. So Jackie knew her scriptures. Because in knowing her scriptures, she knew Jesus. But she knew him even better than that. For in the waters of holy baptism, when Jackie was washed in those waters, Christ made her his very own sister. Which means that she is a child of her heavenly father's. A father who has promised never to let go of us, to never let go of her no matter what was going on in her life. To be the one thing in her life that she knew would never forsake her, would never leave her, would always be there to hear her prayers, 
of thanksgiving, of praise, of concern, of struggle. <laughs> she knew her Savior even better than that. For like Simeon, Sunday after Sunday, when Jackie came here to Good Shepherd with Douglas, with their family, Jesus was put into her hands. And she took and ate. Christ's body given for her. And then she took and drank Christ's blood for her. Shed for her on the cross for the forgiveness of her sins. And then after having received these good gifts, after hearing her pastor say, depart in peace, your sins are forgiven, Jackie could stand up with the congregation and sing these very words that we heard read from Simeon and Luke 2 today. Lord, now let your servant depart in peace. Jackie was always ready. She didn't know the day nor the hour, but she was ready because she knew that when her Savior came for her, that this is not the end. She knew that just as Jesus was raised from the grave, so too will she. Jackie knew the truth. Just like Doug does. Just like Scott and Patrick does. Just like their family does. Just like many of you do. But this is not the end. For on the day of her Lord's coming, <coughs> when he will come down from heaven with the cry of command and with the shout of an archangel, and the blasting of the trumpets, Jackie will rise again. Made whole and perfect. No more signs of the strokes. Memories restored perfectly. The times that you spent with her laughing and having a good time, all known to her again. in her Lord and Savior's presence. Where, well, you won't need these anymore. Because the St. John tells us that the resurrection of the dead, there will be no more weep. There will be no more mourning. The sun will not strike us nor any scorching heat. Strokes, heart attacks, cancer, none of those things will bother us anymore. COVID will be something in the complete and utter distant past. Because Jesus has made it so. That's what Jackie wanted you to know. One of my other short visits that I had with her over this last year. And in a way, I don't know, like Simeon, if he kind of, or if she kind of had an understanding of maybe the Lord's will a little bit. She told me, she said, Pastor, tell him about Jesus. I'll be honest. No matter all the stories you guys shared with me over these last few weeks, things Jackie told me, could never do justice to the things that you know about her. Share those things. 
cling to those things. <coughs> Hold to those memories. But even more so, Hold to Jesus. Because Jackie and I can guarantee you that if you cling to Jesus, you will see her again at the resurrection of the dead. For Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Our Savior Jesus Christ has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. Let us remember with thanksgiving what God has done through his servant, Jackie. Jacqueline Elf Wheeler, age 82, passed away on October 28, 2021. Born to Elmer and Mildred on July 11th of 1939. She was reborn a child of God in the waters of holy baptism on March 28, 1948. She was confirmed in the Christian faith and was fed the life-giving body and blood of her Savior, Jesus Christ, in 1952. Jackie is, not was, is the beloved wife of Douglas. 56 years here on earth. Loving mom to Scott and Lori, her late daughter, Sharon, for Patrick and Melinda. She was a cherished grandma of Olivia, Paige, Eric, Catherine, Taylor, Sydney, and great grandma to Ian, sister to Pat Hartman, and the late Bonnie Vladimir. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give thanks to God our Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for our sister Jack. Amen. And now I would invite you to join me in singing our hymn of response, When Peace Like a River.
Let us pray to the Lord our God and Father, who raised Jesus from the dead. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your life and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gates of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption, to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Give to the family of Jackie and all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care. To casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks for Jackie and for all the blessings you bestowed on her in this earthly life. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for the blessing that Jackie was to so many, not only those who are gathered here, but the many throughout the world who know her as well. Bring us all at last to our heavenly home that with her we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to life. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also. And that neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die.
He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Father who created these bodies. May God the Son, who by his blood redeemed these bodies. May God the Holy Spirit, who by holy baptism sanctified these bodies to be his temple, keep these remains to the day of the resurrection of all flesh. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the death of your Son, Jesus Christ, you destroyed death. By his rest in the tomb, you sanctified the graves of all your saints. And by his bodily resurrection, you brought life and immortality to life, so that all who die in him abide in peace and hope. Receive our thanks for the victory over death and the grave that he won for us. Keep us in everlasting communion with all who wait for him on earth, with all in heaven who are with him. For he is the resurrection and the light, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. As Patrick would like to say a few good words about his mother. Try to hold this a little better together. <laughs> good morning. Um, first of all, uh, on behalf of Dad and Scott and the rest of the family. Um, I want to thank you all for being here today to help uh, celebrate Mom's life. And that's what today is, is a celebration. And when I think of Mom, it's easy to come up with that one word that best describes her. And of course, that is love. She always put other people's needs, wants, her desires ahead of her own. And as I've gotten older and gain more experience and perspective on life, I think about my sister Sharon and wonder where she got her selflessness and generosity. And then of course the answer has become increasingly obvious that she got that from mom. And I mean, how else can you possibly explain being married to my dad for 56 years? <laughs> it's a lot of love and a good portion of patience. And some of some of my fondest memories of mom was um, were always in the kitchen when she taught me how to taught me how to cook and doing dishes and and uh, you know during the course of, of time I've learned to cook some of her recipes and no matter how hard I tried, I tried to make her lasagna or her tater tot casserole. Um, inevitably it was never quite as good as mom's because I didn't have that, that special ingredient that she put into every meal, which was her love. And one of my favorite things about the holidays was her and I would kind of get away during Thanksgiving and Christmas and we'd do the dishes together. And it was always a bit of peace and quiet and calm during the craziness of the holiday season. And we would just talk and we would talk about everything and anything, and that was always a, a thing that I always look forward to. And, you know, over the last couple of years, um, Thanksgiving dinner became more and more difficult for mom, and, um, but she always soldiered on. She always pushed through because she knew how much Thanksgiving dinner meant to all of us and how special it was for us to share that meal together. 
And if you only knew, fortunately you didn't get the chance, um, but if you only knew how good my mom's stuffing was, um, and I know everybody says, my mom has the best stuffing. Well, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. Uh, she has the best stuffing. In fact, my brother and I would always joke that she would sprinkle a little special something on the stuffing that made it so good, but in reality, it was just a whole lot of love. And all you folks from church, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, how much money were you all willing to spend on a plate of her Buckeyes at, uh, during the bake sale? Um, that's a whole lot of love in that plate of cookies. But guess what? Um, and this is the, the thing that I want you to take away from all this, is that all of that love that she put into those cookies and the stuffing, it lives on. It lives on Dad, it lives on and Scott, myself, and it lives on her grandchildren, whom she loved more than anything else. It lives on Katie, Eric, Taylor, Sydney, Olivia, Paige, and her great-grandson, Ian. And it lives on in all of you here today, and anyone else who knew Mom, and had the blessing to um, know her, even for just a moment. And so I just ask that, you know, as you leave here today, keep, keep her love with you. Keep it here. Keep it here. It's okay to be a little selfish. Just keep some of that love for yourself. But go out and pay it forward and spread some of that love to others so that this love can keep growing and live on forever. And finally, I, just, I want to conclude with um, the lyrics of one of my mom's favorite songs, which is, everything I do, I do it for you. And that was mom. Everything she did, she did for all of us. I love you, Mommy. Thank you all. God bless. I invite you now to please rise for our closing hymn, Abide With Me, and then Selected Verses.